Lena is a young female skateboarder hoping to turn pro one day. She can skateboard in our magical forest, but there is no collision detection on the ground. So let's start off by creating a world folder for her that we will store some ground components and add hitboxes to them. Within the folder world, let's create a ground dot dart and start off by placing some position components in there. We're going to create a new class ground that extends the position component. With the position component, we'll be able to add a hitbox to detect a collision with another component that has a hitbox. Although the world that we created for Lena does have gravity and velocity, it does not have any collision. The bare minimum that you'll need for a position component is the position and the size. So let's set up the constructor that will require a size and position for every position component that we create. As a reminder, when we use the tiled map editor, we created a bunch of rectangular boxes in our objects layer. And those rectangular boxes have a size and position. So when we instantiate the ground, we will iterate through the object layer of the tiled map. I like to enable the debug mode so we have these nice purple rectangle boxes around the things that have collision detection on it. From Flame 1.1, which is new in the spring of 2022, you can now add hitboxes to the position component with the add keyword. So we're going to add the hitbox within the onload method. And although there are other types of hitboxes with various shapes, you could make your own shape. The simplest one is the rectangle hitbox. So that's the hitbox that we're going to use in this tutorial. If you want a better approximation of the hit or the collision, you could use a different hitbox. If you are following the 1.0 series of my tutorial, you can either use the 1.0 version of Flame or just make this minor change to how the collision detection system is used in Flame 1.1. At the time I'm making this video, Flame is on 1.1.1 and that's the version I'm using in this tutorial. Back in main.dart, when we are reading in the map.tmx file, one of the pieces of information that we have in main.dart is the layer. So when we get the layer for the ground, the ground, the word that was specified in tiled, that we created this word, ground, um, then we have a list of the objects that we can iterate through. So every time through the loop of this list with this for loop, we're going to instantiate a new ground. Although we only have four ground uh, objects, roughly four, if we had a hundred objects, we could use this same algorithm with this for loop. It will just read in the map file that we created with tiled and it will have or add all the ground objects that we have specified within the tiled map file. So the X, the Y, the width, and the height are all specified in that map.tmx file. You could pop it open in your VS Code editor and confirm it. Or it might help with the understanding of what's actually happening here. And every one of the ground components that we instantiate will have collision hitbox on it. At the current time, there is no collision on the girl and there's no action or callback taken when she does collide. But we do have these beautiful pink hitboxes now. I'm going to move Lena into a subfolder called Actors. So I like to look at the game as a world. Within the world, there's a bunch of actors. So actors, there could be people or objects. And within the Actors folder, we'll create a Lena.dart. This is partially for organization, but we also do need to add the collision callbacks and the hitbox to Lena. 
The collision callbacks mix-in is new with Flame 1.1. This is only needed if you want to take an action when the collision takes place. When the collision does take place, we will set the Y vector of the velocity to zero and also stop the gravity being applied to the velocity. We'll use a very simple constructor um, and then we'll just initialize the debug mode to true within the constructor. So constructor is a method that has the same name as the class and it's generally capitalized. And then there's this colon and after the colon you can initialize things within the superclass or other properties. Similar to the ground uh, class that we just created, we're going to add the hitbox in the onload method. So we'll once again use a rectangular hitbox, although Lina is not rectangular, the ground was a closer approximation, but to keep the collision detection simple, we're going to use this uh, rectangle hitbox, which, uh, you know, there's going to be some error, right, when she collides. But I think for the tutorial purposes, it's would be, it's nice and simple. We next need to make sure that instead of instantiating Lena as a sprite component, we instantiate Lena, the girl skater, as the Lena class that we just created. So look for the portion where we declare and instantiate Lina and change it to the Lina class that we just created. We're next going to need to add the has collision detection mixin to the flame game itself. Once we add the has collision detection mixin to the flame game, we'll be able to detect a collision from within the Lina class that we just created. Everything's looking fantastic. It's going very smooth. Just need to go into Lina and there's a on collision and we want to take uh, some action when Lena has a collision. In the on collision method, uh, the action I want to take is to adjust the velocity. So I'm going to add the mix in with has game ref, or uh, the mix in has game ref. And from using the game ref, I'll be able to adjust the velocity within that on collision method that we added. At the current time, we're storing the velocity actually within the game uh, dot dart. We should probably start within Lena because Lena is the one with the velocity. However, right now it's actually still stored in main dot dart. So we'll have to do game ref dot velocity dot y. And we'll set it to zero when Lena collides with the ground. Boom, she's stopping. Since we don't have the horizontal movement working yet, we'll get that working in the next video. We can just adjust the initial start position of Lena before she starts dropping down from the sky and see whether she stops at different positions on the platforms on the ground. She has kind of a magical skateboard that can easily roll on the grass. So when we enable her horizontal movement, we're gonna let her roll on the grass. It's gonna have some friction, which will slow her down, but she'll be able to scoot around the grass and go through this beautiful force that we'll create. But let's make sure that when she does hit the platform and the vertical movement, the platform, which has some grass on it, will stop the vertical movement.
So let's test it again with the final platform that we have. This dirt with that bit of grass on top of it. Boom, and she's stopping. At this stage, if you look at it, she's actually sinking very slowly, as if in quicksand. And that's because gravity is still being applied to the velocity every time through the loop, even though we've set the velocity to zero at the first point of collision, uh, the, the gravity is still being added uh, onto, the, uh, onto the girl. Instead of calculating forces, we'll simply create a Boolean variable to see when Lena is on the ground. So the first time she hits the ground, we're gonna set the Boolean variable to true and maybe in the future she'll jump and um, then we'll set it to false. But right now there's only um, true. And then the gravity will not be applied at that point. In the next video, we'll tap on the left and right hand sides of the screen and have her skate around through the beautiful forest that we are creating. Have a great day. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course if this is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.